Morning, Cowboys. Good morning. There we go. Uh, Mike Fisher, fish for breakfast. Morning, Cowboys. Breakfast at Fish and Ease. Uh, we'll go item by item by item this morning. Uh, make sure you catch uh, Bree and Richie hanging out at the Star. That video is up and running. Uh, we will give you some NFL coverage uh, from the Star. If you are an Uncle Fish Premium subscriber, we'll do that this morning as well. We will keep you posted all day long on Cowboys, 49ers, and much more. We do it, of course, with your help, uh, your comments, your questions, your criticisms. You can pitch in to the Bree Fund. That is the super chat that has been set up for us by YouTube. You can also hit the like button that beats the algorithms on YouTube and tells Cowboy Nation, looky here, uh, Marsha Fisher says we're going to have 45,000 um, friends and members here by Friday. Friday midnight, 45,000. Uh, I will be there and I'm glad you will be too. And of course, I'll be at the Star tomorrow uh, when things ramp up for practice and we'll be at AT&T Stadium on Sunday and on Sunday, right? Yeah. And uh, we're, we're trying to figure out how to put a little get together in Jerry's beer garden. So we'll work on that. Item, New York media guy. Oh, those New York media guys. Writes on Twitter, this is Ian O'Connor. The Giants need a whole lot of good football players. Yes, the Giants roster is not good. And this Cowboy exec, Will McClay, knows how to identify him. Yes, this is true. Yusuf pitches in $6.99 into the brief fund. Thank you, Yusuf, and good morning. If the Giants want to change how they're perceived in a hurry and hurt a chief rival, throw a ton of money at Will McClay and see if he'll finally leave Dallas. Yeah! And this is where I come in. This right here is why you pay me the big bucks. Uh, that, that speculative tweet, which, uh, you know, a lot of times you, what you'd like is, um, and you'd like to be able to assume when it comes from a, a real live reporter, is that there's some meat there, that he's hinting at something, that he knows something. And if you find this particular writer to be credible, if you're in New York, he's got 50,000 followers. If you find him to be credible, then you, you assume that there might be some fire beneath his smoke. And indeed, he got 519 likes, 203 retweets, and 151 comments. That's a lot of traffic for a guy who just completely made something up with no knowledge whatsoever of what he's talking about. And here's why. Is that dingworthy? Will McClay has a son named Gabriel. Nice kid. He's now 16, I believe. I've talked to Will McClay about this uh, this is the first, well, it's not the offseason yet. I've talked to Will McClay every offseason about job prospects, offers. And he brings up family every time we talk. And part of the family that he's talking about is Gabriel. Now, you know, uh, four years ago, Gabriel was 12. There was no way Will McClay, who, by the way, is a single father. The idea of Will McClay... We take grabbing, taking his 12 year old and moving all around the country was not happening. Okay. Now he's 16. The smart money is it's still not happening. If at some point Gabriel turns 19, which he will, and goes off to college, that could theoretically change that piece of Will McClay's thinking, but there's a bigger pie here and I'll get to it. Now, of course, Gabriel, uh, and they have a lot of family in Houston. Um, that's kind of was Will's home base. G if Gabriel goes to college at Rice, then 
Will McClay might be even more attracted. And I'm, I'm going to stay in Texas. If he goes, what if he goes to college at SMU, TCU, UT, Tech? Well, all the more likely then that Will says, well, good. He gets to go to college and I still get to stay with the Cowboys. So family is one of them. There's another part of the family aspect. And this is what the Jones, the Jones family does. If you are family to them, you are family to them forever. And some people, some critics of Jerry think that there's a, that his loyalty is about feeding his own ego. For instance, oh, they just kept Jason Garrett here because he, he wanted to prove himself right. Well, certainly that's part of it. You want to be right. But Jason Garrett was embraced here as an important part of the Jones football and more family. Yes, that can get in the way when it's time to fire a guy that can get in the way. Uh, this was Jerry's difficulty with the Romo situation. This was Jerry's difficulty with DeMarcus Ware. Uh, Jerry was, was almost in tears on DeMarcus Ware on having to say goodbye to him. Uh, it made the Des Bryant situation tough. So Will McClay's father, uh, I believe passed away of cancer, as I recall. I hope I'm getting that right. And uh, when the end was near and clear, Will McClay's dad came to Oxnard. And the Jones family treated Will McClay's dad like he was their dad. He got to go everywhere, he got to be everywhere, he got to see everything. You know, the crow's nest that Jerry goes up and sits in with Will and Mr. McClay was up in the crow's nest. The Giants can't buy that. Now, the New York sports writer says they should throw a bunch of ton, a ton of money at Will McClay. Okay. Except if it was about a ton of money, you think the Giants are going to outspend Jerry Jones? Is it about power? I say this all the time, and I've said this to Will. At some point, don't you want to captain your own ship? And I still believe that's a, a, a theoretical possibility at some point for Will McClay. Except think... Think of it this way. You're in the family business and you're embraced as part of the family. You get paid like a general manager and he does. You in many ways have the authority of a general manager. You just don't have the title. What's the difference? The, the mistake that Jimmy made and Jimmy and Jerry in their divorce, obviously both are responsible. The mistake Jimmy made is he, he wanted everybody to know, Jerry wanted everybody to know about the power, about his power. It's true. And Jimmy wanted everybody to know about his power. And had one of them just swallowed that, they would have stayed together for five more years. Who should have swallowed it? Well, I mean, we could all we could say, well, Jimmy was more important. Therefore, Jerry should have swallowed it. I know there's a lot of people who think that. But since Jerry was the employer and Jimmy was the employee, maybe the employee should have swallowed it. Will McClay does that. Will McClay doesn't care, to this point in his career, doesn't care about the title. He's got the authority. He's got the money. He's got security. And oh, one more thing. When the Cowboys screw something up, who do 99% of the fans blame? When they screw up personnel, who do they blame? Not Will. So he gets all the money, all the authority, all the security, all the family, none of the blame, and the only thing he has is his title as vice president instead of general manager. That's why he's not going to the Giants. Oh, and one more thing. Assuming they're staying locked in to Joe Judge, and that's the word. I think they're meeting today, but that's the word. The owner just picked the coach when they don't have a general manager. So who's really in charge? And Will did say this to me one time. Uh, you, you, you're the general manager. You think you're in charge. No, you're not. The owner's in charge. 
The owner can hire the general manager and fire him a day later. And the Giants are proving that. Ownership is making the decision on the coach without consulting their general manager because they don't have a general manager. They could wait. They could say, Joe, you know what? Why don't you hang tight? We're going to get a general manager in here and we're going to see what happens. I doubt they're doing that. I think they're keeping Joe Judge. That's what New York media thinks. But this New York media person, with all due respect, doesn't understand the real components that drive Will McClay. And doesn't understand why I call Will McClay the unifier. His value isn't just, boy, he sure can pick a good fifth round pick. That's that's important. That's great. He is the unifier. I've never seen anybody else on an executive level who can have deep ties to the owner, deep ties to the other members of his family, deep ties to the coaching staff, deep ties to the scouting department, obviously, and deep ties in the locker room. Find me that guy. Cowboys are keeping that guy. Hector Vargas. They picked Taco over Watt. Was that Jerry or McClay? It, it's not. It's not Jerry. Jerry doesn't. Jerry rubber stamps those picks. He has to officially approve those picks. Jerry didn't sit down and watch film of Taco Charlton. Not really. That particular case that Rod Marinelli pushed really hard for that, and Will McClay agreed to it. So Will McClay gets the blame for that. Just like uh, the Cowboys draft where Jerry did it on the boat. Oh, Jerry did it on the boat. Will McClay did it. That was Will McClay's draft. Because they're all Will McClay's draft with, with, the, with Jerry as his overseer and the rubber stamper. And obviously, Stephen deeply involved, coaching staff involved, Mike, uh, Mike McCarthy's never been as involved in personnel in his entire career as he's been here. That's the story on Will McClay. Dan Grigsby, Fish, you remind me of Norm with the way you tell inside stories. Uh, Uncle Norm, now you call me Uncle Fish since I'm old. Uncle Norm helped raise me on radio. My first job in radio, of course, hosting Fish for Lunch in 1995. And uh, Norm Hitzkus, Kevin McCarthy, David Gold, Sports Brothers, uh, we're there with me every step of the way. Couldn't have done it without him. And so I'm indebted to this day uh, to the great Norm Hitzkus. And I appreciate the very flattering compliment. Cowboys up north predicting that Dan Quinn's not going to leave because maybe he doesn't want to be a head coach. I love you up north in, connect, in Canada, but you're not listening. Linda, why would you want to go to the dumpster fire that is New York? There are some guys that are cut out for some things. Will McClay is a is a Texas guy. Now that doesn't mean I don't I don't mean to be too parochial here, um, but but not every New York guy is meant to be in Texas, and not every Texas guy is meant to be in New York. And if you want an example of this, go back one more time and watch Brian Kelly land in Louisiana. And the minute he gets off the plane, he somehow catches a Cajun accent. Some, some guys from there don't fit here. Some guys from here don't fit there. Will McClay fits here in an incredible way. Joe King, NFL stands for no freaking loyalty when it comes to coaches and players. They follow the money. And Joe, uh, there, there's almost no exception to that rule. But that makes them kind of, Joe, the same as you and me. Joe, you work as a, a doctor, a lawyer, or a plumber for the Smith firm over here. If the Jones firm over there offers you more money, you'll consider going to the Jones firm. There, there's nothing particularly wrong with that. The, the advent of the salary cap in the NFL and free agency hurt dynasties. If you had a great team in the 70s, you stayed great for a while. Had a great team in the 80s, you stayed great for a while. That changed with the advent of the salary cap. It was hard to stay great. So in a sense, Joe, it was kind of more fun to be a fan back when you could have dynasties if your team was one of them. It was really fun to be a Cowboy and Vikings fan in the 70s. Cowboys, Vikings, Raiders, Steelers 
wasn't that much fun to be a Saints fan. They didn't they didn't like the uh, the no salary cap and the no free agency thing very much. Know what I mean? Scotty, good morning, Fish. God bless you and Marsha this morning. Thank you. Micah, it's flipping cold here in Charleston. Otis gets it. In a way, Will McClay has the most cush job in sports. In a way. Now, there's a lot of demands. There, there's a lot of pressure. But I can't imagine what Will McClay would have to do to get fired. Scotty, the Giants are a bigger mess than Mike Fisher after he dumps an egg on top of his head. Yeah, that was something. Grant, good morning from West Memphis, Arkansas. JP, when can we get our straight dope, no bullsh coffee cups? Um, Broken Halo is working on that right now. Uh, that store is supposed to go live on the 11th, which according to my math is today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. Fishsportsnetwork.com is the place. Fishsportsnetwork.com. And uh, if it's not live now, it shall be momentarily. It looks pretty good to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Straight dope. No bullsh. And there, it, it looks good to me. So uh, that's the uh, that's the link. Fishsportsnetwork.com. Broken Halo is big on uh, calling me FS1. Fish Sports. <laughs> ah, close enough. Greg K., how was that egg for breakfast? Delightful. Hey, uh, ring that bell, says Christopher, and smash that like button, all y'all. Okay, let's do that. Now, my idea of calling Vic Fangio, let me explain. Call him to offer him the defensive coordinator job that's not vacant yet? No, no, no. Call him for an, a, a formal interview? No, not exactly. Call him for an informal interview. What? Brian Broaddus first threw this out there, and I'm going to uh, advance the ball. Broaddus says they ought to call Vic and ask him, what did, what did you see that week before you played us that helped you? What, and, and so now let's advance. And that's a, that's a great thought by Brian. Now let's advance the ball. What are our weaknesses? What are our tendencies? What are our strengths? Not your tricky blueprint. Don't give us that crap. That's that's junk. All right, we had a blueprint. How about them blueprints? But what, whatever tidbits of insight you have, we'd like to borrow them. Now, why would Vic do that? This happens a lot with guys that are on the same coaching tree. So, um, and, and so you have to look back. Did Mike McCarthy ever coach with this guy? This is why Quinn and the general manager in Denver, that this is part of the root uh, of the connecting the dots there. They work together in Miami. They know each other. They like each other. It's a thing. So is there a, is there a bit tie somewhere in the Cowboys organization? Not one that I can find yet. They still can get his phone number, but there is this. Oh, and by the way, there is the agents since there's about six agents that run this whole thing. So guaranteed, Somebody on the Cowboys coaching staff has the same agent as Vic Fangio. That's almost for sure. But then there's this. Why is Ben McAdoo here? In addition to the fact that he's a genius. Why is Ben DiNucci here? In addition to the fact that he's like a next note Tony Romo. Vic is from Pennsylvania. Not Pittsburgh. Five hours away from Pittsburgh. So that's not quite the same, but Vic is from the state of Pennsylvania, as is McCarthy. Not bad. Vic's hometown is an hour away from Dan Quinn's hometown. Ah, okay. Dan Quinn in New Jersey, Vic in Pennsylvania. They all have the same accent. <laughs> they speak the same language. You call Vic 
and you say, listen, first of all, sorry about the Broncos thing, but man, congratulations on how the way you dismantled us that day. We, we want to buy you a beer. We want to buy you a virtual beer and we want to talk to you. If there's ever an opening here, we absolutely want you to be considered for that. But in advance of that, we want, we want you to help us with some tidbits. And now I'm going to really advance the ball. Where did Vic, Vic Fangio's career that ended up with him being eventually, finally, a head coach, its greatest foundation occurred where? Panel? Panel? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? San Francisco. From 2011 to 2014, he was the defensive coordinator in San Francisco for Harbaugh. When Harbaugh departed, they decided, the 49ers decided to hire somebody from the staff. Well, he's the defensive coordinator. He's the top assistant. They, they, they went to a Super Bowl. They had a top five defense, I think, for those three years, as I recall. Alden Smith was a part of those teams. They didn't hire Vic Fangio. They hired Vic Fangio's underling, Jim Tom Sula, who you know for a year in Dallas. So Vic, you have another reason to give us some information to help the Cowboys play the 49ers. Aren't you just a little bit bitter at the 49ers? You are, aren't you? Just a little bit bitter. Bones Crusher, Fish, the loyalty in the family is why we're arguing with you about Dan Quinn. No, that's not why you're arguing with me about Dan Quinn wanting to stay. You're arguing with me about Dan Quinn wanting to stay because you want him to stay. That's why. Period. There, there is no credible insight available that says that Dan Quinn's going to turn down head coaching jobs to remain the Cowboys defensive coordinator. None. His, his emotion and his statements are the same emotional statements he's made every week at every job he's ever had. I'm not, listen, I'm not against your passion and I'm obviously not against Dan Quinn. I'm, I'm just spelling out for you how this usually really works. That's all. Teeny Weedy, can we run more plays with McGovern at fullback? I'm not a fan. When I think I know now what happens when you take your six foot five, 300 pound guy and put him at his skill position. I think I know what you're going to do. That's the problem. It's not very deceptive. Crimson, I just finished watching last night's Fish at Six episode. What a show. Jay-Z, Jerry Jones is the worst owner in the NFL. I don't know, man. He, 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 he just built a team with a lot, with the people under him that they, they just, they're 12 and five. Jay-Z, what do you want? What do you want out of it? You, did he, what, what would convince you that, that today is the wrong day, that this is the wrong week, that this is the wrong year to say Jerry Jones sucks? What can I do to convince you that you need to wait till they go six and 11? Then Jerry sucks. Don't you get it? Wildcat. Jerry Jones brought that Saudi guy into the boys' locker room and Jimmy pitched a fit. That caused a split. No, no, it didn't. It, the split was caused by two egomaniacs who wanted credit. And that's it. You can decide for yourself which egomaniac should have stepped back a little bit. Jerry says now he should have. Jimmy says now he maybe kind of, you know, uh, should have, maybe, kind of, maybe, you know. Hey, Fish, do you know, who do you think has the advantage of knowledge over the other, Shanahan or Quinn? Yeah, that's a tie, isn't it? And uh, Kellen Moore said last night, you'd have to be really dumb not to be watching Kellen, uh, not to be watching Kyle Shanahan run his offense and try to borrow some stuff there. So no, no. now it's, it's too, I think he's speaking generally. 
I think it's a little too late to say, oh, did you see what they did? Let's install. I think I think you see what they did yesterday. Let's install that today. I don't think I don't think things work quite that quickly. But I think generally speaking, yeah, you you certainly try to borrow the knowledge of of that offensive coach. And yes, uh, the fact that Quinn and Shanahan know each other and know what they do, that is a, a really good subtext here. Frank, you 499 pitch in. What's the over under on Quinn staying? I, I mean, he's got to get a job offer first before before I think we should put any grand odds on it. You know, the Broncos aren't just interviewing the four guys that we've talked about. They're, they're going to have a list of 10 guys. So, you know, George, the GM, was, probably has other friends. Um, there's certainly going to be a push somewhere in that city and maybe even in that building saying, don't we need an offensive coach around here? So, but that's just Denver. Miami, Chicago, Jacksonville, Raiders. But I I can I can give you the the odds on whether or not Dan Quinn is interested in a head coaching job instead of being a defensive coordinator, generally speaking, and the odds are 100% he is interested in being a head coach. 100% Huff, McClay doesn't get nearly the amount of credit that he deserves, which is fine if you're a Cowboy fan, right? Bones, Marsh's favorite coach of all time because his name's Bones Fossil. I thought he was a player. No, he's a special teams okay. coach. <laughs> Hector Vargas, McGovern in the backfield, works on play action. Sure it does, if you say so. Stan, Cowboys go one and done, Quinn will be gone. The, the more the Cowboys succeed, the more likely it is that he'll be gone. If Dan Quinn helps the Cowboys win the Super Bowl, he will be the hottest thing in sports. And Kellen Moore will be the second hottest thing in sports. Ray Johnson, $5 pitch in. Thank you for that. If you want to pitch into the brief fund, you can certainly do that. That's the super chat that's been created by the good people at YouTube, and it helps fuel the program. Are we addressing left guard through the draft or free agency? This team isn't going to spend a lot of money in free agency on guard. Uh, it makes the, the, the simplest answer, Ray, is that Connor Williams... Uh, is a free agent and gets paid to go elsewhere and that Connor McGovern wins the left guard job. But there's one other wrinkle here. Terrence Steele plays right tackle next year and Lyle Collins moves to left guard. And if you think of it that way, if you look at it all, look at the picture that way, and then Connor McGovern is your sixth lineman and Josh Ball is your seventh lineman, then you're not, you're not concerned about any of those things, about chasing a starting lineman through uh, with a high pick in the draft or with spending money in free agency. I think I just painted a beautiful picture. Richard White, 49 pitch in. Did boss man's play last week earn him the starting job? I would say no. Uh, and Anthony Brown is coming off the COVID. And, and I, I bet you that Anthony Brown uh, recaptures his job. But boss man fat being involved with Anthony Brown moving inside, that's still in play. Coaches like security blankets. And the question that they're going to have for themselves this week is Mario Baskin pitches in 499 into the brief fund. Thank you. Who do we have more safety, security, faith in? Jordan Lewis or Boss Man Fat? And most coaches, I don't have any particular insight yet into this one. Most coaches that I've known over the course of 40 years of doing this is they they will they prefer the security blanket. The thing that they really know where they're, what they're going to get. And of course, that'd be Jordan Lewis. But we'll monitor that this week. So Bones. Dim Bones. I'm going to write about this on uh, Cowboys SI. Dot com today. Greg Zerline has missed. 
Six extra points this year. He's missed six field goals this year. And Bones can explain. Uh, I'm going to do a breakdown of this uh, a little later today, too. So stay tuned for this. If he was a rookie, I'd be worried, says Fossil about Zerline. But every kicker has kind of lost it. And then they kind of find it. Tiger Woods has lost it. Bones. You're, you think Greg Zerline is Tiger Woods? And by the way, I assume we're talking about the Tiger Woods who wore the red shirt every Sunday, won every week, won the most tournaments, dominated, scared opponents, uh, was a was a machine of, of fierce efficiency and not the Tiger Woods who, you know, had his wife hit the car with a golf club or was uh, having crazy ambient sex or uh, was... That's what he was having. He was having crazy ambient sex. Um, or the Tiger Woods who somehow got in a weird car wreck uh, that almost killed him, that somehow the story has all gone away about how and why that happened. I assume we're not talking about that Tiger Woods. Greg Zerline is Tiger Woods. Is And Bone says a lot of silly things. That's the silliest one. He said, I love Greg, I believe in Greg, and I'm not supporting him just because of my experience with him over the course of 10 years. He was, this is a production business. When we stop producing, things change, but I have full faith in Greg, I still do. That's the right thing to say. But then Bones keeps going, because that's Bones. And he says, you know, it's just a psychological thing. John, are you sure that that's smart? Are you sure that that's what you want to be in the newspapers? That, that basically he's got now a psychological problem and he goes, and we got something we're going to work on to fix it. I'm sure you do. Because, because what coaches do is they take a football and some duct tape and they put it on the end of a stick and then they wave it around and they think they've invented something. Bones, if I'm wrong, then I'll be wrong. But I really think I'm going to be right. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Tiger Woods' is dad, go get him. Uh, we will get into Greg Zerline and Bones Fossil later in the program today. Uh, we will have more breakdowns, uh, scouting level breakdown stuff of the 49ers versus the Cowboys, because I know you're into that. And uh, yeah, what the coordinators had to say yesterday, what the head coach had to say yesterday, uh, I, I really am into the we belong thing. Mike McCarthy saying, and he said it a little bit softer than this, but basically, I'm Mike McCarthy. Damn it. I belong in the playoffs. And that's a good way to roll. Bones Fossil might want to borrow a page from Mike McCarthy in how to in how to be forceful without being colorful. Yes, Earl Bones Woods. Uh, is in charge around here. Taco Charlton says, white on rice. Taco Charlton is also Tiger Woods. We're all Tiger Woods. Fish out. Oh, uh, yeah, go get you that store. I think I think uh, Broken Halo, who just pitched in 99 cents, is here to guide you to the new, the new fish store is called, Marsha, thanks for asking, fishsportsnetwork.com. Marsha, we'll see if it's up right now. In five, four, Three. Uh oh, I gotta be able. I gotta be able to type correctly. Wonk, wonk. Come on. Lonely cat man. What about that bones fossil vasectomy story? That was the day when bones fossil told the vasectomy story for the benefit of the HBO cameras. Is it up? Yeah. Good. It goes to broken halo, but here's all the. Oh, good. All that stuff. But when you type in, you type in fishsportsnetwork.com and it goes to Broken Halo, perfect. but it comes up yep. as your fishsportsnetwork.com. That's it. Fantastic. Good job, Broken Halo. Go get it. The, uh, he's obviously sent me some sample stuff and it's magnifico. When Bones told his vasectomy story, for, for HBO, what's the show called? Hard Knocks. 
Then the show aired. Then Bones held a press conference to announce, oh, I didn't know they were going to put that on the air. Really? And then he basically told... <laughs> And then he basically told it again. I didn't know they were going to tell my vasectomy story, but in case you didn't hear it, let me tell you it again. Uh, I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying he's not great at what he does. I, I hope it works. I, you need it to work. It's got to work. I'm just saying his name shouldn't be Bones. His nickname should be Loon because he is a lunatic. No, he's not a lunatic. He's a loon. Not a lunatic. He's a, he's goofy. In a nice way, in a lovable way, in a good way. Arkansas, how many misses cost us first place in the bye? Well, uh, make, make a kick at Tampa Bay and you got a different situation. Exclusive, exclusive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How did how did 43,000 of us take this long to think of that? And on that, I bid you adieu, sirs and madams fish. Out. Oh.